Okay, so I bought one of these super janky K40 lasers back in the fall, and now I'm working on upgrading it and turning it into a tool that's, you know, actually worth using. <laughs> and as part of that, I want to uh, find out how much power I'm losing between the tube and the workpiece. Because the laser bounces between the mirrors and goes to the lens, you have some losses there. And I want to know objectively how much I'm losing. That way, when I upgrade things, I can uh, see how much it's improved and put that in real terms. You know, it's, just, it's nice to know. And if you don't have data, you don't know. So I went online and looked for some sensors that could uh, measure the power of the laser. And I found a few, but they all cost like $300 and up. And if you're familiar with the K40 laser, you know these things only cost $300. So <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me to spend as much uh, on the sensor as the thing you're trying to sense. So. I thought about it for a while, and I think I have an alternative that uh, is extremely cheap and at least good enough for, you know, a tool of this quality. So, here we go. Uh, all the meters I saw were calorimeter based, which is basically a thing where you have a mass at one end that you apply energy to to heat up, and then you measure the change in temperature. And uh, basically as it, you know, heats up, that corresponds directly to the amount of energy you put in, and from that you can calculate the power. Uh, this works because of a property called uh, the specific heat. It's basically a measure of, uh, of how much energy you got to put into a mass to heat it up by a certain amount. So if you got uh, like density, right? Density is mass over volume. Kind of uh, how much inertia do you get for an amount of volume of a thing. Uh, specific heat is kind of like a thermal density, right? For, uh, for a given amount of mass, how much more energy does it take to heat it up? So think about it that way and you kind of have a good analogy there. So for aluminum, uh, which is what this little block down here is made out of, it's about one kilogram or kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin difference. So kilojoules are measurement of energy, kilograms are mass, and kelvins are temperature. Uh, if you don't know kelvins, they're basically uh, the same thing as Celsius, but more pretentious. So it's a one to one uh, ratio there. So if you don't know kelvins, just think Celsius and you're pretty much just good off. I think the exact number for that figure too is like 904 uh, joules per kilogram Kelvin, but then one kilojoule just makes, it makes the math a bit easier. So as a, a quick example of how you might use this, uh, imagine you had uh, a little thing of aluminum you wanted to melt down in like a furnace or a kiln or something, right? So say you had like two kilograms of aluminum. Uh, well, the melting point of aluminum is 650 Celsius and the room temperature is about 20. So they just say you gotta heat it up by 650C, just again for easy math. So two kilograms uh, times two uh, times 650 Celsius would then be 1300 kilojoules required to melt that mass of aluminum, right? So if you have one kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin, you wanna heat two kilograms by uh, 650 Kelvin, then that's gonna be 1300 kilojoules. So if you had a, a furnace that was like four kilowatts, we know a joule is a watt for a second, right? That's, uh, you know, energy is power times time. So a joule is a watt per second. So then that would mean uh, if you had like a four kilowatt kiln, you'd have to heat that for what, 325 seconds for 1300 over four. And then 325 seconds is what? Like five and a half minutes. So you would expect in the perfect scenario, you can melt that two kilograms in five and a half minutes with a four kilowatt uh, furnace. The thing is that perfect scenario doesn't actually happen because you have losses. Uh, you know, there's uh, energy that goes into heating the furnace up itself, like the actual walls and insulation of the furnace, and all the heat you lose through the uh, through the walls of it as it's heating up. So in reality, that ideal five and a half minutes ends up being more like 20 because <laughs> you have to factor in like all that loss. So with the calorimeter here, uh, Basically the same thing, we apply energy with the laser and then we can know the mass, uh, know the time we applied the power, and then we already know the specific heat. So with all that, we can, uh, and we can measure the temperature difference with the thermometer here. And from that, we can then back calculate the power of the laser. The problem is that assumes that this absorbs all of the energy of the laser, which it doesn't. Uh, in fact, aluminum basically reflects uh, all of the energy from an infrared laser. You know, one of the reasons why aluminum is so hard to cut is because it's very reflective to the infrared uh, light that the CO2 laser puts out. So like a, a carbon dioxide laser puts out, what? It's infrared at like 10 point something nanometers. 
Uh, it is light, but it's light that you cannot see. And it just likes to bounce off aluminum, whereas like wood and you know organics and plastic th plastics and things absorb that readily. So uh, for aluminum, you don't know what that absorption ratio is, or you don't know how efficient it is. So we really can't uh, use that to calculate the energy directly because we have nothing to calibrate this thing against, right? So that's that's kind of an issue. But what we can still do is measure the temperature change at different points in the system and then relatively see how much power is lost. So in these tests, I measured uh, between uh, after the first mirror, so somewhere around here to get the uh, energy after it bounces off mirror one, and then beneath the lens for the, uh, to measure the amount of loss between uh, these two mirrors and the lens. Now, I didn't measure uh, straight from the tube because you ever looked uh, back here on a K40, there is basically no room to even get in there and measure the calorimeter. But uh, yeah, so we need a way to make this thing absorb the energy from the laser. And uh, well, for that, you need some sort of coating that has a better, uh, better absorption ratio than plain aluminum. And one thing you can use is anodization, right? So this, this scrap of aluminum I found sitting in my shop, it was anodized on both sides. And this side here is still anodized, and this side here I polished off for the tests. And we'll cover, talk about what that black stuff is in just a sec. But uh, the anodization does absorb um, the energy from CO2 pretty pretty well, really. You don't know how well, so you, again, you can't calculate the amount of energy the laser puts out directly, but it will absorb enough, you can get a temperature reading, and then if you're only doing proportional changes from place to place, that still works. You know, if you swap out the, the, uh, the lenses then, or the mirrors, you can see how much it improved relative to what it had before. And really the, the amount of energy your laser put out doesn't really matter, right? Because what it puts out is what it puts out and you really, you really can't change that. What you can change are the different components of the system. You know, these lasers are like a nominal 40 watts, but they're, <laughs> they're, they're not 40 watts. No, they're maybe like 30 in a good day. But we can't really know how much that is, but we can get at least an idea of where we're losing it. So, um, anodization is one way of making this thing absorb heat better, but that requires having something anodized, right? And you can anodize aluminum in your home shop, but that's kind of a pain in the ass and a bit much for most people. So I was reading up on the uh, Wikipedia article for emissivity. Uh, emissivity is uh, a measure of how likely, uh, of how easily something emits infrared uh, energy. So like cast iron has a very high emissivity. If you put your hand above a cast iron pan, you feel the heat emanating off of it. And it's not just the convection from the air, it's you know heat just beaming off as infrared radiation. And even in a vacuum, you would still feel the heat coming off of it. So that has very high emissivity. And it's related to absorptivity too, where like aluminum doesn't have any absorptivity or emissivity on its own. But in that Wikipedia article, they mentioned that black soot has a very high absorption ratio. And I'm like, huh, well, we can just coat this then in soot, and then it will absorb the energy. <laughs> and like, soot is easy to get. You know, you just get a lighter, and you uh, hold it right up right near the tip of the flame, and you can soot this thing up in like maybe a minute or two, and give it a pretty decent uh, and, you know, reasonably heavy coat, and that will then make this thing absorb the energy from the laser. Now, as you do that, uh, the soot will slowly burn off, right? Because it's soot is just unburned carbon from the fire. So when you have the lighter, you know, there's a little bit of that, uh, was it butane or whatever? Whatever uh, fluid is in the lighter is not fully burning, and then the remaining carbon is getting deposited in here. And that carbon can still ignite and burn off slowly. And the laser, you know, that will do that. But it's it's kind of like trying to burn a brick of charcoal with a match, right? Like you can get it to smolder a little bit, but it doesn't burn off immediately. You know, you have to add a lot of energy, like with a lighter fluid and then a match, and then charcoal will burn. This is basically very finely powdered charcoal spread on here. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you can still use this as a cheaper form of anodization. You know, instead of that, use this, it'll absorb the energy. And uh, when the soot gets too worn out, take the lighter and just reapply it easy peasy, you know, and that works way better than any other sort of coating. Like if you did paint, paint will absorb it, but then the paint also gets blown off, right? Then that, that doesn't work at all. Um, 
So let me give you a quick demo of how this works. And then I'm gonna run over the numbers I calculated that really prove this is a viable method if you want a calorimeter on the cheap. So uh, a couple things, no, nope, we're doing this. I'm gonna measure uh, right down here this time, be uh, beneath the lens. Uh, when you are doing measurements in here, do be careful because uh, you know, lasers and stuff, don't shoot your eyes out, kid. That's, that's no bueno, no fun. Um, so for me, I'd measured right here and then down here uh, several times on both the soot side and the uh, anodized side. And uh, when you're doing that, because there's no interlocks and stuff on here, just be sure you at least have you know safety squints engaged, all that jazz. And uh, keep your hands out of anything in this area because if you try to measure like this lens and you're doing like this to measure here, if you move this thing out of the way, the beam will bounce off that and right into your hand. So you wanna make sure you're measuring way clear of the beam because otherwise it's, again, you just lasers, be careful, okay? So I got this thing set to 20% uh, power. That makes it put out about seven milliamps on my machine. And I don't have it turned up to the max because for doing relative loss, we don't need it at the max, right? We just, we don't need that much uh, power. Oop, good still. Okay, cool, YouTube Pro. Ha. So, this currently reads 19.2C. And you'll see, so you can see a little bit of that soot burning off just slowly, but there's still plenty enough on there to last for several tests. And again, as long as you're doing it relatively, like ratios between different readings, the, uh, the amount of soot, you know, and the uh, different effectiveness of it doesn't really matter that much. It cancels out. Okay, and that's probably good enough. And you can see now it's heated up to uh, 31.6. And then that corresponds directly to the amount of energy we put in this thing. Now, the thing is, we don't know, again, how, uh, how effective this is at absorbing the infrared. And we also don't know the mass here, like, very precisely. Because um, I just measured it on my kitchen scale and it weighs like 25 grams, give or take, but the scale I have is probably good to a gram or two. So we don't know uh, all the elements of, of this, you know, of, uh, I guess, let's see, where's a pen? So what you can use this specific heat to calculate is the, put this guy down again. Okay, cool. Uh, the temperature is the power times the time times the mass over specific heat. So, so the temperature is the power of the laser times the time, right? Because that's uh, energy applied over the mass times the specific heat. And then you can do some algebra and you know calculate for what would be the power. The thing is. We don't know the, um, the mass all that accurately. We don't know uh, the effectiveness, right? The absorption ratio up here at all either. So what we can do is just make sure that at least the time is constant, the power is constant by not, you know, fucking around with that. And then we can measure the temperature. And again, if we're uh, taking readings there and there and dividing, we can see how much we've lost. So. Again, this block is just 25 grams of aluminum or so, uh, anodized on one side for testing, and this side here was uh, polished nice and clean with some sandpaper and then covered in soot. I got a old kitchen thermometer shoved in there, drilled a little hole, filled it with some uh, thermal compound, and then just put some glue on there just to hold it in place for the tests. It is a uh, hot snot glue, which is not the best for thing you're heating up, but <laughs> for the purpose of testing, it, it worked well enough. So. I do have results over here already, so you don't need to watch me go through all those tests. And I ran them all at 20% power, which is seven milliamps. I did them all for 30 seconds using a timer to make sure they're all, you know, at least as, as close as possible to being even. So I did the tests with the, uh, the soot, testing, you know, once after mirror one, and then uh, the lens, and then repeating that two more times. And I went back and forth that way. So just as the, um, as the soot coating here wore through, I wasn't gonna be doing all of these ones with it, with it and then these ones next for uh, the after the lens readings. Cause then all these ones would end up worse just cause there's less soot there to help absorb the infrared. 
I did see there was a, a rather significant impact in how much is absorbed with how much of a, of a soot coating you put on there. So if you spend like 30 seconds with a lighter, that's not enough. You gotta give it like a good minute, two minutes, maybe even up to three minutes to get it nice and evenly coated. Alternatively, if you have an acetylene torch, an acetylene torch will put like a thick coat of soot in it in like two to three seconds. Cause <laughs> I don't know if you've ever done the acetylene welding, but if you don't turn the oxygen on when you light that torch, it just fucking billows out soot and your whole shop is covered. It just, it makes a royal fucking mess. Um, but if you have one of them, also makes it super easy to get this thing covered. So, <laughs> anyway, so I did a couple tests, and I found that the average temperature uh, increase when I did a 30-second hit after mirror one was uh, 21 degrees. You can see every uh, every test there. Started at 19.2, it ended at 42.8. I didn't wait for it to cool down all the way between tests because you know. We're measuring the temperature difference here. It's, you know, this is all in terms of degrees Celsius or Kelvin difference. So the difference is what matter. And then uh, as long as you take into account the starting temperature and subtract that whole thing, it, it cancels out. So it was a 21.7 degree jump on average measuring after the first mirror. And it was a 15.3 degree jump measuring after the lens. That means if I, uh, like change the system around to have only one mirror and then a lens in the workpiece, right? And somehow it was cutting with only a single mirror. Uh, I would be uh, having this go up by a whole lot more, like much closer to the 21 degrees, as opposed to 15. It's putting out a lot less energy. In fact, 30% of the energy is being lost between those two mirrors and the lens, according to these tests. And you think like, whoa, 30%, that, that seems excessive. Like, well, that's what I thought too. So I tested it again with the anodized side. And the anodized side has the benefit of being much more consistent because, you know, it's, it's just anodized. It doesn't change. Uh, so you see like here on the, uh, the soot one, it was 23, 22, and then 19 or 18. And then here it was 16, 16, 13. On this last test, the soot had really worn through a lot. And then uh, these two readings both came back way lower because with only a thin film of soot left, it just didn't absorb as much heat. So... Um, now that's why, again, I went, you know, here, 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 then here, and here. But with the anodization, because it doesn't really wear out, you see the numbers are far more consistent. And uh, the end result is about the same, <laughs> showing that 28% of the energy was lost between those two mirrors and the lens. So, uh, yeah, shit. <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty bad. Um, I gotta check my mirrors and make sure they aren't dirty or like misaligned or something because that is that is god fucking awful and like I would have hoped maybe maybe a 15 to 20 percent loss and then when I like swap out the mirrors and lens for nicer stuff I could see maybe you know five percent loss but uh, I guess it's a good thing I'm losing 28 percent now because it means if I uh, upgrade it and fix things up it'll be like just you know gangbusters here on this little cheap thing but uh yeah that that's the gist of it um How's that for some science on the cheap, right? <laughs> so I guess uh, I'd like to hear if anyone else tries this and what the results are, and then if you make some more uh, updates on it, and then run the test again, see how much energy, uh, how much more you kept by the time you hit your workpiece. So if anyone wants to try, I would be happy to hear uh, feedback, comments, and stuff in the comments down below. I also got more videos on this and further upgrades coming out. So as I do change out uh, mirrors, lenses, and stuff, I will uh, do updates on how much better that performs. So if you want to see those videos, you can uh, subscribe and all that garbage. Um, and yeah, I guess until then, uh, peace.